Okay, we'll start off with one of them. So I want to I want to introduce you to some of the software which you can use, or basically the tools which are available for for teaching and learning. Are you all, all aware of Big Blue Button? No, Hafiz is already aware, right? Okay, so. Don't get uh, carried away with the tool too much because the tool is basically a teaching tool. Now, when you want to deliver a lecture online, there are basically, we have in, our, in UMS, the, the most accessible is one is Google Slides Presenter. Okay. The second tool is Big Blue Button. So in my class, I use Google Slides Presenter. Okay. So if you go to Google Slides, right, go to my drive, okay, go to drive, go to my Google. One second, we start the screencast. Okay, test. Okay. So you go to the Google Drive. Google Drive, my Google Drive, just put Drive. Mm, uh, inbox, go to Google Drive. Okay, and then you can see Google Slides. Okay, so go to recent. Okay. So, for example, this is a Google slide which I use in class. Now, suppose you are in the class, you can present it as slide, as such. Have you ever tried broadcasting this? You ever? No one has. Have you ever broadcast your Google slide? So, you are a student in other class, and you can. Uh, okay. So, I I share with Hafizi, and you can present it there. So, you can you can actually present it. Click here, Zul. Click here on the icon arrow for present. Okay. So, you can. You know, you click on the icon. The arrow, the icon, icon, icon. So, okay. So you can present here, and you can also present it on another screen in another location. Currently, I'm not connected to another location. You can present, and you can invite people for your presentation by clicking on share. Okay, share. So if I share it with, you can share with. You add. Uh, uh, can view? Can view? Yeah. Can view? Okay. Can, okay. Anyone with University of Malaysia with the link can edit, can comment, can view. Okay. Okay, so you just add you add whoever's in the room, Hafizi, you add Hafizi, Hong. Hafizi, you add Wilson, you add Al you add uh, okay, so you add everybody, you add. Doctor, your email is? What's your email? Uh, M underscore Adila. M underscore Adila underscore. Okay, okay. And then you add uh, Salmi. El, El Netra, El Netra, and, uh, and uh, you add, you add, no, nor Eliza, Tarjin, Tajid, nor Eliza, you add nor Eliza, Eliza, no, no, nor Eliza, nor Anna, and what? No, and what? And what? No, double L. Double L. Eliza. Okay, so Eliza, uh, no, Eliza. Okay. Okay. okay, so Asia. Okay. So okay, you get, uh, so just send. Send, just send. Yeah, you can edit it, you can share it with six people. Okay, now I click present, present. Okay, so now this, this slide should be technically be shared with you all. So you can, can you click on the link? So you should be able to see it. Can you see it on your link? The same thing? If your network is fast, you should be able to see. You can see, right? You can see, right? Okay. Now, when you're presenting it, you can present uh, the slide and this, this you can record it using your screencast and you can broadcast this. So now, okay, so you, this, uh, this is the best option compared to big blue button. However, this one has one limitation. It does not allow you to use camera. But it's allowing you to broadcast the slide anyway. So if you want to present on, if you're connected to another LCD projector with a computer, you can present it there as well using the IP address. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it allows you to present. So you just click on, and you just click, and then you can see at the bottom of the slide, you will see, if you scroll down, you will see laser pointer. Okay, laser pointer, okay. Now this laser pointer, you can move around, you can actually mm -hmm. present anywhere. So they can see you moving around, okay. Look at the question and answer session, quest Q&A. Q &A, click on QA. Okay, QA. Okay. Now you have your audience. Okay? You can add audience. Okay, so now the audience is there. You one minute. Yeah, we can we 
we have to wait for the network. We installs, okay, start new. Okay. Okay, done, right? Okay. Something questions. Um, okay. Okay, so can you see this link here? Slides.app.google. Can you can you see it? Visible? Okay. You click that in your browser. You you I, I will copy it for you. Okay. So you can you can you type slides dot app in your just in your browser. Just type slide dot app dot g o o g dot g l r k eight z f. Go dot gl slash. Is it visible? Zf. Zf prof. Sorry, this session is closed. Closed? No, wait, 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 wait. On, on, on. Make it on. Okay, on, right? Okay, right? Reset. Okay. Now your students will can interact with you. Okay. You can just post a. Can you post a question? Just, just post a question. Can you see it? Okay, enter. Okay, you can see. So now the student, now this becomes a social networking platform. This is a very good tool because light, it even works on any, see, can you repeat yourself? Okay, now this comes the like and like. Now suppose the student in the class like, they can like that question. If they dislike, they will So this becomes a social media application. So example, the lecturer can ask, what do you think about this slide? Is it explanatory or not? Then you get instant feedback on that particular slide. So this is a, the, one of the fastest and light, it's basically light meaning, it will work on any platform. In, in, in UMS, it works very well. The big blue button is a bit slow, but this one is very fast. So as you present the slide, you can move on to the next slide. So just move, on, just move on to the next slide, and you keep keep on. You can keep on receiving questions. Of course, you can minimize this, you can minimize, and then you can hide it back, or you can so it goes on. Okay. So anytime you can pop up. So this is a very good tool for lecture presentation on the system. Synchronized classroom, but this one, okay. So I will show you the big blue button also. You have done big blue button, right? Big blue button is a little bit more advanced, but this is the basic tool. So I would recommend if you are doing uh, lectures like yesterday, two of my students were not in class; they were in their kampung, so they could actually work. They work with the system, of course, and then they record. Okay, so, so it's a one where you don't have your face, is it? no, no. There's no face, no voice. It's actually recording unless you select the present on under screen option. But there has to be another screen and another IP address. Then you then so like yeah. So so. Suppose, you are, suppose I'm doing the IDP course from here and you're in Lab 1, I can present it in Lab 1 with the voice over. But you need to have an IP address over there, which is in the room. So the voice no problem. Uh, voice will be no problem once you present it. Time, uh, yeah, the voice will be no problem. But we don't have, so, but there is no face, okay? So that's the first one. So in the voice. The voice, Prof? We need to present it at another screen, so that is the function. There is no function. No problem. There is no function on that. You have to go into the Google Meet. You have to go into Google Meet. You have to use Google Meet. You can use Google Meet. Google Meet. You want to use Google Meet? Okay. You just you show prof Google Meet. Yeah. But this is good for presenting when you have a lecture. Okay. Click on Meet. Okay. You can upload the slide here. I think this is familiar with all of you, right? You are familiar with this one. No, I'm going to say that this particular one, yeah. you're presenting the slides, yeah. but your narration cannot go No, through. narration will not go through. Unless you use the closed captioning. Zul, can you show me the slide again? Okay. There's something known as closed captioning in this, so you can see, see, close on closed caption. Okay. Now you allow the microphone, but now what Google will do is it will pick up your voice, you present, you pick up, it leave it on to present. It's presenting right now. Mm -hmm. So Google will pick up your voice, provided you have a microphone there. Jul, can you say hello, hello, something? Hello, yes, yes. So Google will pick up your voice and it convert to text below, but voice you cannot hear prof inside this system. So it's designed more for presentations where you, but suppose you are presenting via IP address, you can get the voice over. Okay. So that's the way it works. So I think closed captioning is not working on this level. Uh, you're recording and it's overlaying over that, so I think that's the issue. Otherwise it will convert your voice 
to text to text message okay so that's one of the ways so i stop presentation i exit once you exit basically all your internet will basically go off okay so this is the text okay yes i close that so that's one of the first uh, things which google gives you as part of the suite the second one is something known as jamboard jamboard is similar to your wall wisher what we took what is that wall wisher last time we use the so you can click on that and you create a jamboard called a demo jam okay demo jam you can create a demo and then you do the same thing you share it with everyone else okay you share you call a demo jam and then you call and then you share share and then you can add copy and paste all the same names so you can share the jamboard so jamboard is a way in which you use collaboration across uh, across your class so it works in a similar way to other sharing apps okay so, you, so these are good because in our ums the google tend to work better than the other apps like flipgrid and all the other known ones okay so okay just 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 send and then you can find perform then you can send the invitation you all use jamboard you use jamboard no jamboard is good for interaction okay and okay so that profong can you can type anything it will receive a jamboard all i all available in ums on google suite so there's no issue you can draw there you can write there you can flip there you can do something you can mark a jamboard you can mark there okay so profong join so if you are having problem with your mentimeter for interaction you use jamboard jamboard is less uh, clutter because uh, mentimeter require fast connection right but you can't conduct quiz here you can only do basic things like adding sticky note you can scribble uh, you can also share something with students yep 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 so when you are having discussion board you can actually use you can conduct a vote also in this i think if i'm not mistaken so you can use this can you click on this icon so the one with a zigzag and you can click and point laser point <laughs> so you can do stuff so it's actually a, a whiteboard which is interactive okay so that's it so this is the jamboard app you can make multiple pages flip through and you can basically conduct your whole class here so suppose you are drawing something you scribble a diagram and then you move on you can conduct it here okay you can insert hyperlink as well so basically that is the functionality of jamboard okay okay so that's under interactive tool so i have that okay. uh now i will show you the more intensive interactive tool which is the big blue button okay so we move on to big blue button you close can close to to already okay so this is big blue button big blue button some of you all are aware of it i think once almi we attended you aware of this one big blue button okay never use okay big blue button is recommended by all the ipts whenever we go to ipts they are all using big blue button integrated into smart to ms whether it will work in ums once it's working once it's running i don't know but it's are using the it require 4g okay to go into big blue button all you need to do is just try it now you don't have to log on okay it's a free it's a free app okay and then you try it now okay so we just agree and then move on you can sign in or sign up also as well with like features as in zoom okay just just go in zoom just go in you just go just just go in to sign in i think you can yeah. sign in yeah sign in yeah, yeah. You can use my google so big blue button is open basically open thing so uh you can add a new room so go down and check the one minute button okay. okay go up go up click on my name okay 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 on the bedroom bedroom so basically i have done other lectures here so basic go to home and uh, okay so we need to copy a url okay i start yeah i need to copy this url it's a big url so we'll have to Let, let me yeah, yeah. Um, shut it. Yeah. You copy one minute. I invite participant, and then you start. Copy that one. Start. Ah. Okay. You want to copy? No. Once you have the button, you will see. You want to copy it? 
you will see that you can share here using the Gmail same way. Okay, so big blue button is going one step beyond uh, Google presenter. This one will show you the picture of yourself, the lecturer, as well as everybody else around you, all your class. So wait for a while, it's set up. Okay, so you can join with microphone, or you can you join with microphone. We we will join with microphone because we are going to speak. Okay, so allow allow to use your microphone. Do a echo test. It will give you a ping. Yes. Is it it's conflicting with your other thing? Yes. Yes. Is it conflicting with your screencast? I think you should close the just close the screencast. It's conflicting with screencast. Yes, yes. I think we don't need screencast when you're doing this. Yes. I don't like that screencast because it always interferes with the other software. <laughs> it keeps on... No, right? Nothing, right? No, right? Uh, okay. No, nothing. Just just switch off the screencast and we use the no. button for a while. Just yeah. Done, done, done. And just cancel it out. Okay. Wait for a while. Okay. So I will switch off the screencast so that we, all, we can use... Oh, it should be okay. Yes. One, two, three. Okay. No. No. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Then we just say retry. Just, just go back. Just <coughs> never mind. It's a project error. So you see, when uh, when you do big blue button, generally you have to have all the component in place. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 We have to invite you using this particular URL. Okay, so it's a big URL. How do we copy it? Usually, generally, I convert it into QR. You all, all have QR code on your phone? Okay, convert the URL into QR code, QR code generator. So in class, we do this and we convert. Okay. Yeah. This is your code, right? Yeah. The code? Yeah. You can just scan the code. And you will be in the class. But this is more complicated than Google Presenter because it requires everything to be in place. The microphone has to be there, the lecture. So we tried this in FKSW. It works perfectly well in their lecture rooms. We tried it there. OK, can access? The classroom? Can you see a big blue button on your phone? Yeah, right? So, okay. So now you come back to here and then you just, you can add, see the microphone is actually picking up. You can add, these are the slides. So in, you can add slides to this by, you can close this and you can add those. Just go up and you add to the three dot. Three dot, uh, make full screen, okay. So you click here. You might minimize this and become too much load. Okay. You can click here and you can add a slide. Okay. Upload a presentation. So I click here on the plus button, upload a presentation. So you can upload, Zul, you can pick any file and upload, performs. Yeah, we have just click, pick one. Pick one which is a PDF, preferably PDF. This one will automatically convert your um, the PowerPoint into its format or PDF. Okay, just put, okay. Upload. Okay, it will take time. Quite fast, depending on the network. Think file, and it'll be doing. It'll do it in few seconds. So the more slide is picking up, right? So that means now it's in real time. 
you'll have to reduce the volume as feedback occurs. Okay, so I'll show you how you can interact with the lecturer now. Okay, so converting file, okay, processing this. So the more the number of slides, the more it, time it takes, it'll, it'll do it, it'll do. So if you are, want to use this, please prepare earlier in your class. Usually I go before class and present. I don't use this in UMS, I use it outside UMS because it's a bit slow in Sabah. If you do it in Samananjun, it's okay. Okay, done, right? Upload, upload. Clicked upload zone already? Waited already. Okay. Okay, done. So done. Okay. Now see, Zul is the lecturer. Okay. Who has joined inside? This is? Profound. You can, anyone, everyone can join inside in the lecture. So you'll see everybody at the side of the lecture. So now you, I start presenting. This works in a normal way. You can hear my, my voice it presents. So you just present the slide as such. And if you want to mark on the slide, if you want to roam around, you have the cursors. You have the respective cursor. Okay. Now, if you are developing a collaborative presentation, Profform also can modify. Any one of you who has access can modify the slide. Okay. And then you can also chat. So you can click. You just click. You will see a chat. You can chat there as well. You can make a remark. So everyone is seen there. So you can see a whole class. So you have 100 students. You will see 100. <laughs> so you can grant them permission. If you can. Okay. Profong has joined in the speaker in the headphone mode only to listen. You can change to the speaker mode. You all can change the speaker. Something uh, there. Yeah. You can. You can do. So you edit something. You can add, you can add to the slide. Yeah. You can scribble on the slide. You can. Do. So this is very good when you are doing collaborative networking. So Dr. Wan Zuhainis from UPM, she used to collaborate with the lecturer from this class is also in America and also in Malaysia. The students are attending the USA and here as well. So she uses this for her interaction. Okay, it works very well. Hmm? Viva, uh, Viva also, but Viva I don't know. So, Big Blue Button is a very good tool and hopefully we can integrate it into our system in the new smart version of UMS. So, it will improve your lecture, uh, the student lecturer interaction. Okay, so that's it. Uh, people can participate? Oh, you can, the maximum I have seen is around 50, but you won't see all of them. When it becomes 50, it will minimize. I have seen 50, up to 50 doing, when they demo it in, in the, so this is the way you do. So, Big Blue Button is another option available to you. Okay, for your student interaction. Students seem to like this because it allows them to communicate within each other in the group itself. itself. Okay, so you can. So after you finish your lecture, you actually stop, you ex exit the room. Okay, you, can, you have the option of recording this lecture as well, but the lecture cannot be saved in the, in the system. You need to download it, okay, because they don't have capacity. It's a free package, so you can switch off. So after you finish, you end your lecture end meeting and then that's it. So you, when you end a meeting, it will basically go offline everywhere. Okay, so this is in the days before, this was invented before Facebook Live came. <laughs> now Facebook Live is like Facebook Live. So it's before, so you just log out. Okay. Okay, so you okay. So that's another tool. Okay, sign out. Sign out. It should be okay. So the next tool which I want to basically show you is, have you done this with your student, Flipgrid? Yeah. Flipgrid you all are familiar with. Okay, so everybody has done Flipgrid. Letra, you are, use Flipgrid? Okay, you know what Flipgrid? I have my account but never use it. Never use it. Uh, Eliza, you have used Flipgrid? No. Okay. No. Uh, so, Hafizi, no, you have used Madhu. Okay. So, when you go to class, actually, suppose you are having your taklimat for the student when they first come in, and then you want all the students to introduce it, then use Flipgrid. Okay. So, you just you just log in, you just log in, sign, log in, actually, log in, log in, educator log in. So, I have my account already there. It's also via Google. Okay. So, log in with Google for educators. And student, of course, they log in with their yeah, UMS ID. Make sure they use UMS ID because of traceability and legal issues. Okay, so when I want to add the class, uh, grade, you just add add new grade. Okay, add new grade. Okay, so so this is the for example, this grade is called Taklimat. So welcome to this class. So welcome to my class demo. So demo, welcome, welcome to blended learning. So BL, just put something. Okay. So, okay, go down, go down, go down, select a grid type. So, you can use a school ID, student ID, share your grid with the network. Okay, school name, yeah. Okay, so because they are using Google, right? Okay. So, you select that and then next. 
Okay, create a flip code. So it's just a flip grid. Okay, I think you can copy, copy. Okay, okay, ready, right? Your grid is ready. Okay, share, click share. Here. Welcome to this class. Is there? Okay. Uh, okay. You can add names here as well. You have a QR code. You can also add name. Okay. Click here, the green, the green one, the green, the green, the green. Share to, okay, clear code, you want QR code, okay. So this is the good for the, when your students first come in and they want the icebreaker. Usually I can share via Google Class. Okay, download, done, done. Everyone done? Okay, and access. Okay. This is good when your new student come in, your Siswi, when uh, Siswi, Siswi, Siswa, Baru, and then you want to do an uh, introduction in class. Okay, so done. Okay, can yeah. cannot cannot. Okay, you just give, you just give her, just give her Lisa. Maybe it's something interfering or the. A prof from Ken? Ken? Okay, okay, close, close, to top. If you close, to top. Okay, then, okay, share. Okay, open it. Click on that zone. Yeah. Uh, you go into, you go to this, click. Click here. Okay. Okay, it should add things. Okay. Okay, so basically you can introduce yourself, you can add your video to this grid. You add new topic to this grid, okay? So, mm, okay. so you give your topic title, for example, hello, and just put hello or something. Hello, and then you say, introduce yourself. Just put something down there. Okay, and then just put down there something. Prompt, just prompt them. Just say, yeah, yeah, just put, and then, okay. Uh, go down, focus, optional, okay, all media resources to your student, okay, 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 create topic, okay, just create. Okay. Ah, it created again, okay, all set. It created one more minute. Okay, so share, you click this, you click on this. Prof, you can access that one? Okay, just click here. Focus on this. When you, when you have access to the grid, right, you will see an icon there asking you to record. So you can record and post. Access, access, you can access. Can? Slow. Slow the network. Yeah, you can do. Okay, done. Okay, we'll try it. We'll just try it out because the network may be slow and it's so you just close it. And then you can upload. So you'll see in your handphone a prompt. So when you click on the prompt, you can actually record your voice and video. Can you record, Prof? Hello, I'm Prof. Hello. Okay. Click. Okay. Thank you, thank you for introducing Flipgrid. Okay, done. Next. Next, 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 next. Next, okay. Should okay. Be yeah, it should be there. It should be. There. You have to post it rough on me. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I think the network slow. Okay. Okay, so check your check your flip grid. Check the grid. Check the grid. Oh, you need to install app Apple. Uh, where is that one? Where are the grids? Grids. Okay. Yeah, right? This is the one they're accessing, right? It's slow. Can you see Prof Hong's video coming up here? Ah, here. So basically, ah, here. So. Yeah, where is that? This one, right? Yeah. This one, right? Okay. 
So it did just depend again like it depend on network. You can see? Uh, yeah, depending on because everyone accessing at the same time. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a bit slow. Yeah, see, profound video is here. So you can basically, when the, when the grid is active, you'll see all, everyone's messages coming up there as a grid. So the idea is that all the students get to know each other using the grid. Okay, So that's why it's called flip grid. So it's a flip classroom. So you can use it and you can add, you can grade it as well. You can grade the video and you can, of course, but this one does not add into your metrics. Huh? It does not add into your smart tool. This is a standalone platform. Okay, So let's flip grade for you. So you use Flipgrid uh, in class to get more engaged. Okay, so I think we log out from that. I don't want to be logged into too many others. Mm -hmm. the middle clash with each other. Okay. Another one. Okay. My list. Okay. Now comes. So we covered Flipgrid. Uh, so basically, I have introduced you to the video projection and the introduction. Now we go into the mind mapper. So mind mapper is a very good, so earlier in the olden days, means 10 years ago, there was something known as mindmapper.org. Today mind mapper has been commercialized. Earlier it was free, but mind mapper is a software which allows you to develop a network of maps. So this is the mind mapper. So all you need to do is, for example, I'm teaching a subject. For instance, I'm teaching basic biology. Then in that biology, I have animal biology and plant biology. Then in plant biology, I have photosynthesis and so on and so forth. So this mind mapper, it creates. So for example, I develop blended learning. Okay. Okay. Now you can drag and draw. You can drag, right? So can you see the end point? End point? The end part? The end part. Ah, you can see the end part? Ah, okay. So you can basically drag and drop. You can add a, a, add a line to that similar to the, add a, okay. You can add a, you can add a, you can add a line. Ah, you add a thing and then you just add. So you can change the color and so on and so forth. For example, blended learning mind map. You add here uh, video, uh, sorry, video uh, conferencing. Okay, conferencing. Okay, you click here, you click on the end of this. Okay, you click on this. You add under plus, plus sign, atas. You click on the plus sign. Ah, you add under. So from video conferencing, you add big blue button. Then you add uh, and so on and so forth. So you can click more and more and more. So big blue button, okay, button. Then you click here, you click here again on this. The same dot, click. Okay, you can add one more button there. So you can add, what else we study today? Google presenter, okay. So we study all that, right? So this is, so when you see this map at the end of the day, your student, so your big complex topic, which is involving so many things can be seen in one map. So when they reference it, right, they can actually reference the map. And then they can, before they go for the exam, they reference the map. Okay, now in this one, you can actually add, depending on the network speed, you can also add links, videos, and everything else inside that. You can add link, but I don't want to try it here. It may overload and crash the system. <laughs> can you add the links? So you can adjust, you can add, you can add comment, and then you can insert. Yeah, you try to insert color, you can change colors. Colors, flags, icons, like color, everything can add. You can also add links, but if you add link, maybe it will not work for you. Okay. So once your flip grid has been added, yeah, you can add. Links, you can add link. You can copy and paste a link to a lecture. For example, if you are developing lecture, right? Okay, go to a lecture. So any lecture which is there? Like, uh, okay, advance. Okay, add. Edit. So the flip grid will be actually in a link there. So suppose I create, like, suppose I have 14 lecture, right? And I start with the main course, and then I make 14 lecture. Each lecture you can make with a link in the flip grid. Uh, sorry, in the in this uh, mind master. So you'll have one picture. You download the whole picture with everything in one page. So the student can go and access the like. So now people have used it for very interesting applications. For instance, you want to have many, you have made a collection of YouTube video from different sources related to one subject, and you want to explore, you can use this. Each link will go deeper and deeper and deeper inside the particular, uh, in, inside the subject. So you start off with the basic surface and you go into it deeper. Have you all used this before? In um, not for classes. Not for class, right? But you use it for planning? Have you used? So this is used. It should be useful. Uh, it should be useful to other students to use my network to do a conclusion or summary or something. 
Yeah, we have uh, of your lecture. Yeah, yeah, Prof. We can use for that. Can use so it will be saved as. You save. You can download it. You can here. You can download. Uh, you can download. You export it, and then you can get your. You can export. See, it gives you option of PDF. And when you get a PDF, you click on the PDF option. You will actually see the links on the PDF. Okay, file A4, portrait. Usually, use landscape, landscape. Usually, and then you save, export, export to your drive. And then my computer. I can go on my computer. Just my. Okay. Yeah, it's have to upgrade. Oh, maybe later. It allows you. It allows you. It should they allow you to do last time PDF? I think they changed. I did it last month and I allowed mm -hmm. so it asks you to oh, it asks you to pay. Okay, okay. So oh, suddenly got paid. <laughs> Use just the card. <laughs> Use my PayPal. <laughs> oh, they started paying. Last month it was. Oh, they, started, they started asking to pay already. So, okay. It's okay, but you can still. The other last month I used PDF and it could download. <laughs> and then suddenly they are charging the money for it. Yeah. Even the other one was very good, but uh, it you can actually share oh, it. Oh, no, oh, point. Pro. 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 Yes, pro. Online? Document online. But it won't be so nice. Ah, RTF. RTF file. You see if the links are coming, Zul? The links coming out? But it won't, uh, with the links, you cannot get. Uh, the links will go away. If you save as RTF, your links will go away. file. If you open it, if you export as MindMester file, you need to open it only in MindMapper. Uh, sorry, in the MindMester. You can only open it. So, I think it's better to have it. Uh, you can share the link to this with your student. So, they will access the link rather than make them pay. Yeah. yeah it's just normal. Just have an account. Just use UMS. You can just print it. But printing won't give you the link. <laughs> yeah. That's what. Yep. Okay. When you click save as PDF, it will come down to the same thing, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, it will ask you to pay again. Oh, when you oh, you mean when you print, you select save it as se select as PDF. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's okay, but as long as you have access to it and you can use it in the live, uh, sorry, in class, you can use the, give them the link and they can access that one. So you save as PDF, but will it save the links? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so we embed stuff. So let it be, it's okay, the network is slow. But basically, this is the way in which you can interact with students at this level. Okay, so. You can close it in the log of the hang, yeah. hang, hang, because too many, too many things open Sorry, at the same time. Okay. Okay. You just, just close. It's close. 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 Just wait for it to, wait for it to close. It's okay. Just, the next one not working. Okay. So, okay. There are two more things which I, which I want you to explore. Yeah. Okay. This is, you can close. Okay. 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 So, this one, I can conduct a tutorial for you because I attended a small workshop conducted in the IUSA. This is actually, do you know that thing where you have a book and then you have a picture and then the picture become alive and you put your camera over it, augmented reality? Okay, earlier you needed the software to do it, today no more. Today you use Blippa. So Blippa is, you get Blippa, Po, Blippa. So in this Blippa, right, you can click Zul, create an app, create an app. Actually, I cannot demo to, to you in the short time, but if you want me to do a tutorial for you in your respective faculty, I click, click Blippa. So you can click Blippa, Blip Builder, okay. So it allows you, so what you need to do is you need to pull in uh, pictures, okay, which, so in the olden, in the earlier days, what we do, we use a phone with a QR code to scan. Okay, in the Blippa, what you do, you you take picture, normal photo, photograph like JPEG. The Blippa will actually extract the code from the picture, and it will create a link to that code. So it, you don't require QR code anymore. All pictures become QR codes. 
with Blippa. So later on, your student just scan the the picture, and it linked to the video file. So, so you can see the the book actually become dynamic. Okay. So Blippa, if you need tutorial, I can give you. But you need to add. Okay, you just add. Just try. Okay. 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 So you cleared Blip. Okay. Click on that. Untitled. I, we won't do it now because it's, going to, it's quite difficult. I mean, you need to do the setting for each one. Okay, creating your. Okay, so. Text time. Okay. So sometimes you need to change the script because of the, the code. Okay, so it takes time. Depending on the complexity of the picture. But if you all want a tutorial on augmented reality using Blippa, I can give you all that. Rob, do you think we should do a tutorial for them on Blippa? Yes. But Blippa is more of a more of a app which is uh, commercial. Of course, there's a free. It, it is commercial. So, so, uh, so in yeah, the Blippa, actually uh, free, huh? okay. So you can actually add different uh, component to this, like text and everything else, and then you can make this uh, grid. Okay, so I cannot explain this to you all because it requires multiple layers. Okay, if you need, I have to do the whole tutorial. But you try and explore this Blippa for your application to augmented reality. So many of the things which you uh, have on books, you can convert to video. Actually, there is nothing special in this. It is basically converting it into a grid in which you have um, uh, like a QR code inside the picture. So when you swipe your camera over it, it will record that, identify that cones or codes, whatever inside that. Okay, so that's the way it works. So earlier we needed a software, now it's done using online resources. Okay, so you explore it. Okay, so that one. Okay, that one we did. Amazon. Okay, and this one is can be part of your project. Okay, this is actually called Amazon Lex. So Amazon Lex uh, is what is being used by our lecturer in our peers in other university. So Amazon Lex is uh, is a chat bot. Actually, have you seen when you type in Google search, you will see Google bot which will find a word for you. Usually you type, for example, Kota Kinabalu fish, and then it says fish eating fish places to fish restaurants of Kota Kinabalu. You type some vegetable market, it will immediately auto complete for you. So that's actually a bot. So the way Google works is by every time we ask Google a question, it becomes more intelligent. So it's finding out what we are trying to figure out. So AWS is actually from Amazon, and Amazon has a bot called Lex. Okay. So Amazon Lex allows you to create content for your lecture. For example, if you have a lecture note, and then the student asks you, how do you define some word term? Okay, you can actually put the word define and term into the repository. And every time the, you, the bot sees these two words, it will connect it together and you give the student an answer. So the, the bot, when you train the bot, actually first when you train it, it's producing nonsense. As more and more students use it, you can train it to become more and more efficient. Okay, so when we went, went for IUCL, we attended a tutorial on Amazon Lex. It was a short tutorial. If you all need training, you can ask me, I will do uh, Amazon Lex for you. Okay. So Amazon Lex will take over the functions which are very routine. Like student asks you, if I submitted the assignment, how many marks will you? How many marks can does it account for? Like you say, five marks or ten marks. The bot will do that for you. Okay. So you can set up the bot. Of course, the bot is standalone. You can't integrate it into Smart Tool. Okay, that's the only limitation. Yeah. Can it be integrated No, no, and because it's running on its own platform. Okay, so it's a deep learning algorithm. So these are some of the applications which you can use and which you can explore and which I can teach you about. Okay. Yeah. So this is the Blippa. So Blippa, we'll just exit this one. So we can show them how. So maybe we can do one day the tutorial for Blippa. Okay. So we go to the Smart to UMS tool and take out the call. Okay, so this one I think all recording again. Recording, yeah. Recording, yeah. Okay, so I think they all use Google Meet. Okay, so okay, I'm covering many tools. 
but I want to give you an overview so you can ask me which one you need and then I can train you later on the full day. Okay, so when one of the biggest problem we face as lecturer when we want to do editing is we have to go back to Zul and I have to ask him, can you please edit my video because I need to join three clips together which I recorded together. The best tool for this is open shot. Where is open shot? Can you click on open shot? Oh, open shot video editor. You have three videos there, right, Zul? The three video from okay. So open shot video editor is a free tool, also free. It's from an open community, means it's a developer tool. It's it will be free forever. No one will this will not be commercialized because it's an ORG project. Okay, so in open shot, right, it's very easy to create your own video because it's in the form of tracks. So suppose I recorded one video and then I have another video and a third video. All I do is you add the file. So you just add the tracks. So you have track one, you add the project file. Okay. You need to have project files first. Okay, so you have your project file. Okay, so you just add project file. You click here, project file, and then you can add three videos there. So I recorded three videos, for example. So import file, it, three small videos, not too big, just three small videos, small videos. And okay, man. Recording, you add three videos. Small video of five minutes or two minutes. So this is the simplest tool which I could find online. It should be as a MP4, so MP4 format. MP4. So it only accept MP4. MP4. Ah, only MP4. So any MP4 video. Ah, you have MP4, right? You just take three recording, MP4. Or oh, WMP also should be okay. okay. Later on we can edit and crop. Okay. Two. Two. You just you can add as many, three or four. Add one more. Put five. Okay. One. Yeah, any, any three. Just add. Put yeah. here. Okay. So you have three videos there. So when you want to add them, right, you just drag and drop them into their respective tracks. So you can drag and drop the videos. And drag and drop, and then you can adjust the transition. Okay, you can drag and drop, and you can have the third track, okay, third video. So you, you can actually add your video directly into the grid. There's no need to record and co copy and paste. Everything just goes into the grid. If you need to have a voiceover, you can add. So usually we can add transitions here. Transition here. Click transition. This is actually a transition. So you see the video moving from one to another. You see a transition, like fade in, fade out. So you just add the transition in the middle, uh, you have a transition there, you have under transition down, you can add under transition there. circle in out, okay, right, bottom to top, okay, you add it there, but you reduce the size of transitions, make it smaller, this one, reduce the transition size, okay, so it's maps over, okay, so then you have, you are ready and it's done, so you are done, after you finish all this, you just render it, you can have effects and closed captioning, but for that you require more training, but when you want to make your video, you basically have the video and then you just render it. Okay, everything in place, right? Everything in place. Is it easier than the other one? <laughs> this one is easier. Uh, easier, right? Yeah. And then you just render it. Okay. Of course, you can't add special effects because you need to have Blender. Okay, so you just play, play, play. Okay, so you use. So you can move, flip through. So you can basically uh, clip many videos together and create a new video so that you transition to the new video. Okay. So you see it's, it's building, the, of course not so professional grade but enough for our student when we record 2-3 seconds. For example, I do Amali recording one part then I have to move the camera and record another part but I can still do this. I don't have to go again and ask Zul, uh, please. So he has recorded this I think in Sandakan, right? This one uh, so he created a video. So you can he can join different clip and add them together. So this is the best tool for us, for lay people. Of course they will use which one? After Effects. Yeah. Use, they use After Effects which is having many layers. But for us lay, lay people this is the best. And the good thing about this is you can, if you make the video and you want to add narration, you can add the voice file onto the video itself. 
So you have to record your voice and you can add to this directly. So after you're done, you basically render it and you generate a video movie. Okay, so these are some of the tools which we are looking at. So we are looking at the video uh, tools, which are the Google presenter, and you have big blue button. Introductory tool for interaction is basically Flipgrid. Then if you, you can use MindMister for the compilation of content, for summarization of content. And this is another tool which we use for compilation of videos together. Okay, so these are some of the tools which you can use. Of course, you have Blippa, which is a augmented reality tool. Uh, of course, for Dr. Bhakti, it will be very useful because uh, you are using a lot of the objects like insects. Okay, suppose you have insect or you have a, a animal, you can use Blippa to capture an animal and then capture the video of the animal moving inside. So you can do that. So I can show that to you all. Okay, so these are some of the tools. Now we will go into the model lecture. So I give you an overview of what is expected in blended learning format. Okay, you can go to Smart Tools in your call. So some of you all, I think, attended the training by blended learning training by Commonwealth of Learning, which was done by Dr. Indira. Okay, so some of you. So you all have developed the perfect model COL. Uh, blended lecture in the format which is recommended by COL and this will become the template for other lecturers okay Afizi also I think Madhirin also had developed I think you had developed one content no so Madhur had developed right Madhirin Madhirin I think developed yeah Madhur you have some right the artificial the IR 4.0 uh, I think so Madhur uh, sorry Madhirin had developed the previous one which is the labor and history in Malaysia. So these are some of the classic examples. So we will show you some of them. Hafizi also has yours, right? You have yours? You know, yeah, you have yours, right? Yeah, so you can show the example. So it's actually call. So the call, you go to the category call call. Just call. You type, you type Eliza's course, the homology, just type homology, it goes into that. Uh, call. So when Dr. Indira came, the idea was to develop you as trainer of trainer. So you'll be the future trainer for UMS like staff right prof so they will be the future trainer of trainer for the blended learning in ums so what she did is we developed the call program so i will basically look at go down to the uh, the wood deterioration okay look at this one i will just show you an example of a very good uh, this is the way it should be actually when when we do our when we first started off with the smart to ms and blended learning right we should just put material inside without even thinking of what the student looks at so we because three forum then we put in the introduction the course synopsis lecture one two three four but when dr indira came she actually used a standard so this is the basically the standard so your course should have very clear uh, like format for the student to understand so you have your course code your course then you have your see this is where we were thought to develop our own lecture introductory lecture so you can see Melissa here introducing her lecture and introducing herself as well. So that gives you uh, the blended learning a human interface okay, because it can't be all. So you see she has a personalized touch, she's here. Now what you can see is there's an introduction, there's a learning objective, learning outcomes, transferable skills and synopsis. All these are stated very clearly for the student to view. And then you have your assessments. So when MQA Suppose uh, if you have an audit, MQA will definitely want to see this because the student should be appraised of what they are going to um, study. Okay, so that's what. So then you have your basically, it, it then goes into the topics. So each topic you have a content and you have an associated activity. Okay, so you have, um, so can you see the, what she has done here? Go up. So she has, you have your module learning outcome and your module learning activities. You have your content. Okay, and then you have your uh, the forum for that particular module. So she has designed it. The blended learning doesn't uh, 1732 is the minimum, but for each module, you can actually have an assessment. But it also depends on your SLT. 
student learning time. Don't overload and give them too many assignments. That's what students were complaining in our masters by coursework. They said there were too many assignments, which was true. So the lecturers in their eagerness to do blended learning, every 14 weeks had 14 assignments. Some of which were not even graded. They were not. They were just given assignments. So the students were objected to that fact. So you should be careful when we do this. So she has got all the learning assignments and the systems away. Okay, so click on the question. Click, so you have question. So, so she has made the question. So you have to enroll and then you can answer the question. So this is a form of feedback and then she can provide feedback for your respective course. So if you need this kind of training, right? In order to meet the blended learning, please let us know and we will train your respective staff. The idea was we were supposed to train trainer of trainers, right, Prof? The objective is to, so each one of you becomes a trainer. So we are trying to incorporate this across. Eventually, we will put this structure to be standardized in the So because later on, when they ask us to support those that are Satara, they are, you know, we need some kind of checklist. Yeah, checklist. Yeah, we have a checklist actually. We can pull it up, Zul, the checklist. Average blended learning checklist. Uh, blended learning checklist. Okay. okay, this is actually a blended learning checklist. I will distribute it to you after this. And you can give it to your lecture and you can monitor your lectures. So don't, Im don't impose this on them. It's optional. I do, it's not a top down, it just, you just leave it to them to option. But you will be able to figure out what they need. So basically here, this is what is there. So introduction to the course, self-introduction course, synopsis course objective. So whatever is essential, right? Like course synopsis table for a mark with a star. Mm. Okay, these, you, these they have to click. It's, it's, so the remaining ones is everything extra. So when you are there, I'll give you permission so you can see this form and you can basically see what is there and what is not there. So when you do your, Nomination, you can basically look for the original content. So if you have original content, it's nominated for the thing. So you can take out Madirin course. Madirin course is the labor history in Malaysia, labor history from the same column. Uh, labor history. Uh, that is. Yeah. Yeah. There were two copy of that. So this is Madirin's course. So it's very well done. See, you have everything here. So all of, all of them followed the same thing. You have the course synopsis, LO, and then the facilitated detail. Uh, so you have your CV as well. <laughs> Put up your CV. So you have everything else. Some, you can add your Google Scholar, Google Scholar citation also. So you have all the things and the times available, the support form, everything in that, in this thing. So this becomes a template for lectures. So if you all want uh, us to come, the PEP to come to your respective faculty and, uh, and give you a talk, Give you a lecture, a talk, we can come and show you all how it's actually done. We can do a hands on. Yeah, yeah. So you have your complete content and then tutorial. So everything is. Madhavin has done a very good complete lecture, even though he was. He had to rush back, yeah, right? That day, yeah, you have yeah, 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 somebody, yeah, your family, <laughs> family. You had a family problem, so, yeah, but still managed to do a very good one. Very good. So this is the exam. This will remain as the example. All your lectures basically will remain as example for UMS. Every time we use, we use your lecture as the as the standard. You can see Elnetra, see Elnetra, and. The uh, physics, physics and electronic, physics and electronics, uh, physics and electronic, the uh, physics, and physics. Yeah, da da, Elnetra, it's physics. What happened? Elnetra, your course is called physics, right? Physics and electronics, right? So there. SF. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you disabled. Okay, but he has admin, so he can still see. I think you can you can click. Huh? Students, yeah, student will access before and yeah. So this is a very good seal. So it's done multiple. So again, you can see the same format. She has followed exactly what is there, how it's delivered, the component, the weightage for the mark. This is very important because later on, usually student complain. You didn't tell us so much for assignment. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's all there. The reference is Rujukan also other from your table. And then your general announcement and then the content starts. So all the content with all the interaction. Very good. Very good. They have used have you noticed they have used embedding. Most of the content is embedded inside. So that's it. Chapter one. Okay. So we have web pages, pages inside. This is actually one of the most exhaustive material. So it's got web pages inside as well. Okay. So uh, next time when we have the MOOC platform is stable, we, can we convert to MOOC? We have to take permission from you. <laughs> we have to take permission. We, we will take permission from you all before we convert. Huh? We will take. We will ask your permission because uh, it will be a. No, they may want to add something else. So, uh, if we announce to them, the moment yeah. the platform is ready, uh, all will be informed. But don't worry about the loading and all that, we will take care. You just tell us what, you give us the assessment, but usually for MOOC, uh, will be smaller than so this. So, they may want to add in or change Amba? the value of Okay, up to, up to them. So, usually six lectures should be sufficient for MOOC, six, okay. maximum six, okay?